Hello everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Welcome to Community Connection. Today we're going to talk about a very exciting event in our community every year. It's coming up, the 42nd Annual PV Marathon. And joining me now in studio that knows everything about the marathon, of course, is John Williams. He's been chairing this event for 15 years. Thank you for joining us. And with us also, we have Becky McDonald, very special member of our community who is going to be running the marathon for the first time, and she is an amputee, so we're going to get her story. So much to talk about. John, how is it going May 17th? May 17th. Well, we're actually right on schedule. And we have a few more people of, uh, already pre-registered uh, than we had last year at this time. So we're off to a good start, and we're really expecting to be a, a, a big event, a great event. And for viewers watching right now, the event is May 17th. The best way for them to find out everything, we'll just start off at the beginning, and we'll mention it through the show, is to go to the website, because that's how you register, correct? Uh, that's the best way to register, and in this day and age, uh, that's been a real benefit to us, because it gets uh, coverage much broader, much easier, much more comprehensive for anybody that's interested in the event. And... Uh, I'm sure you'll get to it, but we also want to talk about the 5K part of the event. So uh, even if you don't think you're a marathon runner, you should be looking at our website, and I bet you'll find something you like and you'll enjoy doing. When we start to talk with Becky here about her story, every single person watching should be able to participate in this marathon because you are doing it. Becky, tell us a little bit about how you have decided to run the marathon and you, the, your situation with now that you, you're an amputee. Um, basically, I had my leg amputated in 2004, and prior to my amputation, I ran a lot of marathons. 10K runs, 5K runs, and um, just uh, recently actually started running again, learning how to run again. And uh, so it's a kind of a very big event for me. And uh, I'm basically out there just showing people that they can, uh, they can do it. They can do it. <laughs> exactly. They can do it. It's yeah, unbelievable. Exactly. Um, a little bit more, though, about your story. How did you end up losing your, your leg? Um, prior to 2004, I had been uh, cross country skiing, and I. Uh, took a bad fall and my knee swelled up and I didn't think it was anything that big and I went back home and put ice on it and uh, it still kept giving me problems and I found out I had torn the meniscus in the knee and I had surgery for surgery to repair the meniscus and it uh, um, they did a good job but it just it kept hurting me it still kept giving out so they did another MRI and found out that there was a, a bone infection and um, I had a malignancy in the, in the knee itself. So from then on, I had one surgery after the next to try to um, repair the knee and also save it. And with each surgery I had, I lost less and less function of it. So I was basically walking with a stiff leg. And um, after about 15, 15 procedures, the next plan was an amputation. And so, so this was four years ago. Yes, exactly. And you've come a long way. Yes, I have. And found okay. your way to uh, John Williams and his marathon. You must be excited now to have a participant like Becky. It says a lot. Well, it, it, it does. And I think uh, the marathon and our run is, is important to us. But I think it's important to let anybody recognize that this is an event that you can enjoy and it's just part of your life. And what she's doing with her life is well beyond what we we're just doing with our run. Uh, and I, but I do like to tell people that if you don't think you can run a 5K, uh, I've got a lady running with one leg. Uh, but we were talking earlier, and I just said, I'd, I think I'm going to change that story. We have a, good lo a lady now running with four legs. <laughs> <laughs> she has one, she's wearing one, and has two in a box. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Yes, I sure do. Well, we're going to talk more about your story. Um, but the, um, the marathon itself, can we have a little bit of history about it? Because it is the second longest marathon in the country after the Boston Marathon. I mean, that's a quite That's a That's feat. true, and it is a Boston qualifying run now. Okay. We, uh, it was in the past, and it is again. Uh, we started this 42 years ago uh, with the Qantas Club, which at the time had its headquarters down at PV Country Club. And uh, they started it as an effort to get the four communities together. Uh, the, the one, uh, Rolling Hills, uh, uh, Palos Verdes Estates, and RPV at the time was not even incorporated. Uh, so the idea was to have an event that ran through all the communities, and that's how the thing got launched. And they just kept on going year after year after year, and we've changed the race layout and the course and the design over the years for a number of reasons. Uh, we no longer run through Rolling Hills. We run through the other three cities, and we run through uh, the uh, Palos Verdes Estates, where the, sh the, the local uh, auxiliary of the police department provides service. We run through uh, uh, San Pedro, starts actually in San Pedro, and uh, we have the LAPD that uh, gives us coverage down there. And then when we run through uh, 
RPD, uh, we uh, have uh, the Sheriff's Department because uh, RPD doesn't have their own Sheriff's Constabulary. So uh, there's a lot of coordinating to be put together to get this done, and uh, it's, it's a lot of effort to do it. It's, uh, we have a great time, and it's a great fundraiser for us. Right. The fundraiser, you said, goes to a lot of children's causes. You must be happy to see that's where yes, the money goes to. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. You're very involved in the community as well. You sell real estate at Keller Williams. Yes, I sure is do. Is there any particular cause that you're, you're knowing that this is going to benefit that you're excited about? Um, basically, uh, just anything to do with the children. Uh, anything to do with uh, limb loss, uh, maybe cancer. Um, anything to do with children. It's one of my priorities. Right. Yeah. The uh, program, the, the marathon, you were really trying to grow it. You said that last year you had over 2,000 participants. The last couple of three years we've been up over 2,000 runners uh, of the three events. That they have a 5K, the half, and the full marathon. Uh, so the, uh, the total population is about you know, 2,000, 2,200, depending on how many people actually there. The half marathon is the growing event. Uh, we're getting more and more people wanting to do the half. Uh, maybe younger runners getting rolling that run five or ten miles can upgrade to the half. And some of the more senior runners that have done marathons in the past don't quite feel like they want to do that again and they'll do it on to the half. I talked to a couple of runners that did the LA Marathon and that was fairly recent so they're going to do the half for us. So that's, that's a growing part of the, uh, the overall program that we do. And, um, it's, uh, but it's a tough course. The full marathon. You have that beautiful view along the way, but you have some tough. It hills. is. It is a difficult <laughs> run. It's a. It's a fairly slow run. It's certainly not an easy run. It's. A, it's more difficult than the LA marathon is. Right. Uh, and in times past, we used to uh, start at the top of the hill and come down the switchbacks over in East View. And uh, the bad news was that's very tough on knees and ankles mm -hmm. and, and toenails. We lost a lot of toenails. Uh, and as the race changed to what it is now, uh, the good news is you don't have that much of a physical problem, but it's a little hillier. You don't have that downhill help, so it's a little slower, it's a little hillier. So it's going to start in San Pedro at Point Furman Park? It starts at Point Furman Park. It's an out and back loop course uh, and uh, runs right along the ocean. It's a beautiful run, mm -hmm. uh, great views. We've got uh, water stations. We've got 12 water stations along the way. We actually have two bands this year on the course. Uh, we got high out there <laughs> We've got some high school cheerleaders at different spots along the way to route the runners along. Uh, and at the, uh, the site itself, we have a, a band that'll be there all morning. And uh, an expo with uh, booths and uh, things going on, and entertainment and food. Uh, so it's uh, lots of things to do. Right. I want to talk to you, Becky, about the challenge for you to do this. The training that you're going to be going through as you lead up to this on May 17th? Yeah, basically it's just a trying to get my endurance back and I, that's something that I've really had to work at and I really have missed the, the cardio of, uh, of running and, and um, so basically I'm trying to get my endurance back and, and trying to um, endure some of the, there's a little bit of pain involved when you're wearing a prosthetic leg and uh, trying to get through that. So it's painful when you're, when you're even walking? Yeah, there's, well, uh, yeah, you're walking a long time, sometimes your, your leg will, I'll get a blister or something. The last 5K I did, I. I ended up getting a blister, and it took, I had to be real careful with it. <laughs> but when you did that 5K, it must have been an amazing feeling to you. It was. Coming down the, that last stretch and, and, and coming through the finish line, um, it was. It really was. Everything went through my mind of everything I've been up you know, through till that time, and uh, it was an amazing feeling. I'm sure there'll be a cheering, a rooting squad for her that day, along with no, all the other no, runners. No. There's a lot of excitement when then along the way and along the route and uh, you have volunteers that you depend on. We have, we have lots of volunteers. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 volunteers uh, at the water stations. We have uh, people along the way. Um, we have the uh, radio club and PV has been very helpful for years and years. So they're spotted each at the water stations and they keep track of what's going on. So if there's anybody in trouble, uh, they let us know at the, at the, loc at the site. Uh, we have paramedics on, on call. So uh, we're prepared to do whatever we need to do. And uh, we've had some minor injuries, but in the whole time, uh, we've never had any, any, major, any major problems. So uh, that's one of the things I'm always happy to announce as, when the race is over. I was talking to Becky about her challenges. How about for you chairing the event and just the challenges of putting this off? Well, it's... Uh, <laughs> or pulling this off, not putting this off. <laughs> uh, there, there's lots and lots of challenges, and it has to do with uh, all the organization that needs to be accomplished, all the things that crop up at the last minute over the years. Uh, in fact, I think it was a year or so ago, they told us two weeks before the run that they were going to close the, 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 
the road for that day because they're going to do some repaving. I mean, some things like that uh, come up. And uh, this year we actually have a community meeting lined up down in San Pedro. Apparently some of the neighbors were unhappy about us running down the street, so they want to have a meeting to talk about that. And we have to put up signage and go door to door and tell them we're coming down there. So uh, those things have to be uh, addressed as they come up. On the subject of signage behind you, we have the poster up, which I think is beautifully That's done. a great segue. It Liz, was, but you know, I want to talk about Carol Russell because she was a guest on the show last year when we were promoting the marathon. She uh, did the artwork, which I think is tremendous, and I'm telling everyone I think they should buy a poster. You should sell them <laughs> because I think they're incredible. Um, her artwork is very fun because you get the lighthouse going, and it feels, you know, you get the capture of the peninsula and the whole essence of your event. But anyway, Carol, she came on because she started a program uh, with the marathon, working with the kids in the schools. Is How is that going? And uh, you're doing that again. Just a little bit along with that. <laughs> in the years past, Carol's worked with LA Marathon uh, from the medical side. And so when she joined the Kiwanis Club and got involved in our marathon, uh, she came up with the idea that let's, let's focus on high school kids, on runners, and all, all kids, all schools, not, not just high schools. So we, uh, and basically she organized and put it together as a thing we call the school challenge. And uh, the idea there is to get each of the schools uh, to get their runners out from whatever club or whatever team, whether they're cross country, it doesn't matter to us. And whichever school gets the most runners participating, they will be given a $1,000 uh, award to the school as they see fit, probably to the, uh, the school program. Uh, last year, uh, the Palos Verdes Estates won it, and uh, that went on to building a new track. Wow. So uh, that's uh, an area to get more interest, more involvement, and um, uh, she put it all together. And that's talking to all the athletic directors, to all the only running coaches, and uh, so that's just a, a new addition to uh, to our event. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a community event. Are you familiar with the track where you're running? Or I mean, it's not the track, but the area that you run the half marathon. Have you checked it out? I haven't checked it out as a <laughs> but I, I am familiar with it. Yeah, so that's so. pretty flat, right? It's just along the Paseo del Mar street there in San Pedro. For well, those doing the half marathon, where do they go? Well, they started uh, at uh, Point Furman in the track. They do, do go downhill along Paseo del Mar and then on up yeah. PV Drive. Right. Uh, there's a bit of hill in there. So you do make right. it up PV Drive? Oh, yeah. And then we run all the way down through Lenata Bay and around and I meant come to back. I'm sorry. You know, I'm saying the half marathon. I meant her 5K. The five she, well, she does it. She goes out up and back. Two and a half K and it comes right. back to that's just So that's just along Paseo Del Mar. That's what yes. I'm saying. For those who are yes. just doing the 5K, okay, exactly. it's not hilly for that. For that. It, not really. And the first part's downhill. So, uh, right. no, uh, right. And you can walk. It's a walk and a run. We have right. people pushing yeah. uh, baby right. carriages. we got people strolling along. Yeah, right. uh, exactly. So it, it, yeah. uh, it's a fun event. And do whatever pace you want. Yeah. Uh, I've always been in the pace car for the 5K. Uh, and this year uh, I will be uh, going in a, in a Corvette. And uh, uh, I, I hang out the back and take pictures. Some of the pictures you'll see on our website are shots that I've done over the years. And I have to mention, I remember when you were down there interviewing us, was it nine years ago? Probably. Just before we had the little one? I was out to hear pregnant. That's what was my excuse not to run in that, oh, really? that event. But I have no excuse when this one comes <laughs> up. Yeah, that was, it's amazing how he's now nine in fourth grade. So I know, I know. That was his first marriage. So uh, we, we go back a ways. So maybe and the community goes back a ways. We're all kind of in this together. Yeah. Um, for the community watching right now, um, what would you like them to know about, again, about getting involved and why it's important for them to get involved? It's really well, it's, it's important for a lot of reasons. Uh, the primary reason for us is uh, that we get to generate some cash we can give away to our, our charities. And our charities are essentially youth-oriented charities uh, at all levels. We start with little kids uh, and the Volunteers of America down in the Wilmington area. Uh, through the high school level, we provide the scholarships to graduating seniors of the various high schools in the community. Uh, and we support other things like the REACH program. We give money to Toberman House. Uh, money goes to the Education Foundation. So uh, that's, that's our motivation to do this. Uh, secondly, it's a great event. You go out and have a good time. And it's good for your body to get out there and get some good exercise. And usually you have nice weather, right? We've always had good weather. It's usually been a little bit cool. And I remember one uh, a time where we had a pretty big fog bank. It was a great picture coming out of the fog. There's these runners coming out of the fog. <laughs> but we usually don't cook anybody. It doesn't get to be 100 degrees out there. So it's very comfortable uh, for running. You must be excited. Yes, I am. And uh, we'll hop around do you have? Are you, are you recruiting people to come with you that day? We oh have, yes. Who who will be joining you? Um, my son. Walk? My son is probably going to be actually running the 5K run. Oh, super. He um, and my daughter probably. 
And I got my, uh, my grandson, who's seven years old, Super. and did the 5K run in San Diego, the first one I did. Where, where do you get your motivation and drive? I mean, a lot of people that would be in your situation would just be sitting at home, probably just feeling bad. And uh, I've always been very interested in sports. I, without sports and without, it's been a big part of my life <coughs> since growing up, since I was small. That's just the way I think I was raised. And, um, but as far as um, after my amputation, you know, there was a little depression. I mean, it, it happens. <laughs> And then I got, you know, checking out other people that were out there doing it. And I looked on the internet and found people like Sarah Reineston I was telling you about, who was the first woman above knee amputee to do the Kona Ironman in Hawaii and finished, um, this is 2005. That's incredible. And I've got to meet her and a lot of other people and it's, they've inspired me. And lo along with just my friends and family and, and my, my office, <laughs> Keller right. Williams, they're, they're always pulling for me. So we have any Keller Williams uh, people going to join you too, or I'm getting put them up to the I'm challenge? Trying to get them up to, I'm trying to get them there. Yes. One one thing I think she might have mentioned briefly that got my attention was she is an above the the knee amputee, right? Right. Which is a much more difficult yes. thing to deal with physically than a below the knee. It is. So to be out doing this running and all that yeah. Uh, yeah, we takes a real we a real effort. We were talking about when you see like now a lot of attention in and wonderfully to show that people that are amputees are not handicapped, handicapable. Whether you have dancing with the stars, exactly. but she is below the knee, right? Just, That's a big yeah. difference if you still have your it's knee. A lot, it's a lot of difference. Uh, you can't, you know, if a person has a long pants on, you can't really tell. You'll see them out there doing a lot more than, than I would, you know. I, I, I could do those things, but it'd be a lot different. A lot different. It's a lot of, a um, little bit more energy, too, when you don't have any. So when you're out there that day, you'll wear shorts and people will ask questions. Probably. Yeah, I do that anyways. You know, during the summertime, I do have shorts on anyways. I'm in the markets and I get asked by kids all the time too, and they come up to me and. And how do you explain that? I'll just tell them what what has happened and stuff. I I have uh, talked to, and in fact, I'm hoping to continue talking to uh, elementary uh, schools in our area here and uh, educating the kids about uh, amputees and uh, amputation and and you know I think it helps them to better understand, uh, you know, that there are people out there that are a little mm -hmm. different, but they're still they're still you know pursuing their dreams right. and still going on. That day on race day, you have all kinds of people with all ages and all exactly. kinds of scenarios going I'm, on in their lives. I'm trying to think of the youngest runner we actually had to do the marathon. I know we had a, a kid nine or younger Whoa, that actually ran the it. complete marathon, the right. marathon? Yeah. And, uh, of course, we have people of all ages. I remember uh, for the last couple of years, uh, a good friend of uh, Carolyn's as uh, an 84-year-old lady who was out there doing a 5K, and she was so excited. Uh, right. to be out there and do that. So we, it covers the whole gamut and it's just a fun thing to do. It's good for you to do it. And nobody has an excuse about not being able to do it. And do I, they? That's right. And you yeah. said you're now, that's you've right. really grown and at one point the marathon, again, which is 42 years now, on the hill was as low as the numbers were three or four hundred people participating. What happened that you got this explosion? Well, no doubt. Uh, in the early years, it was uh, a very, very actively supported thing from the uh, Kiwanis Club, but uh, they got older and they got tireder. And uh, so uh, it had kind of wound down a bit. And when we took it over the uh, club in, uh, uh, at the uh, country club down in Palos Verdes, which is about 1990, 91. Um, at that point in time, there were only six people left. Wow. So uh, we, uh, we took over the, the gauntlet at that time and, uh, and began building it up. And it's just more and more participation, more involvement, um, uh, more people getting uh, 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 excited about it and, and working on the program. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though we still have a relatively small club, we've only got 25 members of the Kiwanis, uh, we, uh, we've got a, a lot of a lot of activity going to make this thing happen. And you get a lot of mileage out of your club, no pun intended. We were talking <laughs> earlier about just the different, you know, children's groups you're able to service, whether it's REACH here in San Pedro. I don't know, if, I mean, uh, in RPV, if you want to talk more about who gets your money. Well, it, uh, it, we do spread it around pretty well. Uh, the REACH program is one of our favorites. Uh, they're uh, uh, developmentally uh, disadvantaged kids, uh, and uh, it's a unique operation here on a part of uh, Irving Hill. Uh, Ranch of Palos Verdes, uh, and we started with them many years ago. 
uh, they run a water station and they love it and they have the most fun out there doing the water station uh, and so we've been working closely with them for a long time and it's a fairly small operation that doesn't have a lot of support so our help and our participation uh, has a lot more to do with uh, you know the benefits uh, we obviously we support the YMCA and the Ed, Ed Foundation Foundation as well but uh, our contribution doesn't have quite as much of an impact but uh, you know, the, there's just a lot of things that are, are accomplished by doing this, and that's what motivates the club to, to do this, the Kiwanis to do that. Okay. As we start to wrap up the show, we just want to add anything you think is important for the community to know for you. What will you do the day before to prep yourself for the excitement? Rest. You'll be resting. <laughs> yes, I'll be resting. Uh, well, yeah. I just think it's awesome what you're doing. And I, I, I think I said last year I was going to come out and do the 5K, and I can't remember what happened, but... Since she's in it, we're going to bring our camera and we're going to follow you on that right. day because I think you're an amazing story. Thank and you. Just, uh, I'm sure you're very excited for this day. Yeah, I oh, sure am. It's just yeah. not that far away around the cor corner. Yes. Again, the website, if people want to find out more and to register, if you want to give it's that. Sure. It's sure. It's the com slash marathon. Okay. And um, go on the website, uh, take a look at all the details. It shows the course layout. Uh, there's an application you can fill out and, uh, and, and uh, make your application uh, on the web. Mm -hmm. And um, don't even have to use a, a stamp and an envelope. Just get, okay. get on with it. Anything I'm not bringing up you want to mention, though, too, that you think is important? I just want to focus on the 5K and the fact that you can go out there and have a good time. You don't have to be a runner. You don't have to be experienced. You don't have to be an expert. Uh, you just uh, get out there and have a good time. And uh, again, and this artwork's amazing, so. I think we have a business idea going here, John, that you need to, to get All right, posters I'll, up there. I'll, we'll get Carol together with well, you. Um, good to see you both on track with what you're doing with your efforts. Again, please get out there and join in the fun on Saturday, May 17th, for the 42nd Annual PD Marathon. That will do it for this edition of Community Connection. I'm Liz Brown-Swanson. Thanks for watching. See you next time.